Hi everyone, I'm Jocelyn and I am grateful you're here. You're listening to the Starting with Gratitude podcast. This is a safe space intended to host meaningful conversations exploring all topics of the human experience. Every conversation starts with gratitude and remains rooted in gratitude. After you listen, make sure to join the community by subscribing and sharing. I am so happy you have joined us. Hey, Kai. Hey, Jocelyn. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. How is your spirit in New York right now? Um, It's snowing here and it's very dreary and gloomy, but I feel good today. I feel really good. I'm really happy to be here with you and you're just glowing. So I'm just (laughs) taking that transference of energy and I'm just like, I'm feeling it right now. Yes. I'm sending you the sunshine that I'm receiving. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I am going to go ahead and invite you to share with us the gratitude that you expressed, and we'll go ahead and dive into our conversation from there. Okay, awesome. I really love this exercise, by the way. (laughs) It's a great way to start the day. So here is what I have come up with. First and foremost, I am grateful for waking up in this body as myself. And with that, I am grateful for my mind, for my heart, and for my spirit. I am grateful for being able to be here as a vessel of information, as light, as love, and to lead. I am grateful for this space that I'm currently in physically. I'm actually at my sister's studio, Tatiana, who is a very talented jewelry and accessories designer. And she let me use her space for this conversation, which I'm very, very grateful for. Um, And with that, I'm grateful for the women that I know, Um, mainly those people being my mother, my grandmothers, um, actually my Nana text me this morning just to check in to see if I was okay. Um, And I'm grateful for the Women in my circle, Um, I feel that this year has been a year where I've really been investing more in that, and I'm very grateful for all of them. Um, I am grateful to be in this space with you. I'm grateful to be in this space with you and for you providing me with the opportunity to speak freely and just give me a platform to be heard. I am grateful for this exercise because it really put my brain to work. (laughs) Um, And lastly, I am grateful that I was able to work up the courage and be bold enough to come here today and speak to you and be recorded and be vulnerable because I have not done this in a while. Yeah, I receive your gratitude and I reciprocate your gratitude. And I also am grateful that you are sharing this space with me and we're about to have this honest and real conversation with each other. And one reason why I just felt called to reach out to you is because one, like I've been following you for a minute and I just like always have just related to everything that you put out. And also, I just feel like you're a very intentional person. Like you emphasize intention in all that you do. And even just hearing you speak here in person and like the energy that you're giving off, it just feels like you're very mindful. And it made me excited to reach out to you. So I'm glad that we were able to make this happen. Um, To kind of touch on something that you brought up in your expression of gratitude in regards to like being grateful for the women in your life. I feel like a lot of people have stepped into this year and are increasingly feeling more of the desire to really align with their soul family, like with people who really nourish their soul and like align with their values and like uplift their spirit. 
And I feel the same way. Like, I feel like I really want to invest in specifically the women in my life, like really create like a strong sisterhood. And I recently moved to LA and then like the pandemic hit. So I didn't really get the chance to, you know, like, connect with people connect with people and all that so now i'm really like putting emphasis on that and you mentioned doing the same why do you feel inspired to focus on that well that's a really good question um and i think for me at least this year it felt like okay so every let's start first um back step a little bit. Every year I start the year with a new word, right? So this year for me, it was actually intention. So thank you so much for all those um, beautiful comments. Um, I really do appreciate that. And I'm glad that it's being reflected even through a tweet, you know, even through the cyberspace world and digital first world that we live in. And one of the biggest things for me in being intentional was I need to be more mindful in those that I allow to have access to me. Um, I'm a very outgoing person. I'm very down to earth. I'm very personable. And a lot of the times I feel I've allowed that to be the reason why there are so many people, you know, draining me of my energy because I'm like, oh no, it's just, they're, but they're like a friend. We can hang out. We can da da da. And I had to take inventory of the people in my life, um, specifically in 2019 and after the year that we just had in 2020. And something that was just really important to me was, you know, where am I investing love and light and just information into the most? Like, why, why do I allow myself to kind of carry, not necessarily this mystique, but this feeling of having to be the lone wolf, of having to be the leader of the pack. Um, you know, they always say you can get further together. And I had to really take inventory of that and hold myself accountable and why I always wanted to be the last woman standing especially if I want to be for women, how can I, how can I say I want to be for women and I'm a woman's woman when I'm not really investing that time into the women in my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so with that, I just made a very honest and very, um, you know, simple decision of, I really want to, focus more on my tribe, starting with cultivating a stronger relationship with my mother. Mother and daughter relationships tend to be very fragile. And that was just important for me to have those conversations with my mom, to, you know, show up for her as I would want her to show up for me, mm -hmm. um, because I still live in the same home as my mother. And, you know, COVID has a lot of things out of whack. And that, that even comes with, I think now, societal norms as being shameful. Like, oh, you still live with your parents, but yeah, I still live with my mom because I'm helping my mom and we're building an ecosystem together. Like mm -hmm. we are friends, we are business partners. This is my confidant. Like, why would I not want to be building that with my mother? Of course, privacy and things of that nature. But if you met my mom, she's cool as shit. So that's important to me, you know, making sure my grandmothers know that I love them and I'm there to support them. Um, you know, like the other day I was on the phone with my grandmother for an hour and we were just talking and just giggling. Like those things are important to me. Women are the fabric of our lives. And I cannot sit here and say that unless I am living in that truth as well. And then looking to the right and to the left of me, like my girl Tati, she's like a sister to me. We know each other since we were 15, 16 years old in high school. That is over 10 years ago. Um, so really making sure that she knows, like, I am very, very thankful for you showing up for her when she needs me to watch her dog or when she needs a favor. It's just the little things that really matter the most. 
Um, And I think also the biggest thing was understanding that friendships, friendships require falling in love too. Those are partnerships too. And I, at a point between 2019, 2020 was really focused on romance. And I realized I wasn't, I wasn't adding that same value and energy to the people that actually really deserve it. And those, and those people in my mind are my girls. Like those are the people that I want to build with more. So sisterhood is very important to me. Um, And, you know, we live in a time where it's like women empowerment, women empowerment, but are you really doing the work? Are you really empowering the women in your life? Mm -hmm. So that's really why it was so important to me to make that an area of focus because it's been a game changer. Like I'm telling you, like I like the things I would tend to just overextend myself for for other people I'm like they no they're not deserving of that they're not my girl that I can call up at 2 a.m and they'll be down to talk me off the ledge or they'll be down to just ride out with me like those are the people that I realize deserve the full Kai the vulnerable Kai and that's really where that came from in a very long winded (laughs) no I appreciate you sharing all of that I feel like so I feel like this theme, like whenever I have these kinds of conversations with people, a lot of people have taken note of their lack of boundaries that they had last year and have taken note of like where they are investing their energy. And if it's depleting them, like people are becoming more aware of like, how am I investing my energy? And I I love that. Um, You mentioned that you had this mentality of kind of going at things alone. Yes. Where do you think that rooted from? Like, do you, um, do you, did you ever become affected by the competitiveness that was integrated in us amongst women or do you feel like it kind of stemmed from something else? I think it was a few things that I have experienced. I think the competitiveness that is, you know, introduced to us at a very young age is a part of it. I think that college was a very big part of it. Um, In college, admittedly, I was a loner. (laughs) Like I had about three to four friends. I really didn't socialize much. I just went there. I got my degree because of past experiences that had occurred. And I just felt very alone in that moment. And I also went away for school. I went away over a thousand miles away. I went to school in Florida. Shout out to Tampa. So I went to school in Florida and I just was, I just very much isolated myself And, you know, also, I think growing up in New York, it's really like that hustle culture is intensified beyond measure. And it's like either you get it done or it won't get done. So it's it's more or less kind of drilled into you like you have to make things happen for yourself, which, in fact, is true. Um, But I don't think that collaboration and unity and togetherness is as champions in that space. Mm -hmm. So I think it was just a lot of factors like my environment, college, past experiences. I feel that because of my lack of boundaries in the past, I was so willing and giving and other friendships with women that when they came to a certain demise or they began to unravel, I would get really resentful. Mm. And I'd be like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I don't care. I don't need anyone. And I'm realizing now that that is, you know, a triggered response. That is a response that you have when you do feel neglected, when you do feel betrayed, when you do feel that you were not being poured into the same way as you are someone else. But instead of feeling that way, which is okay to feel that way, feel that, work through that. You say, okay, 
what can I learn from this? I need to set a boundary here and here. It doesn't mean that I need to just completely cut everyone off and not build with people. Like I think Ari Lennox said it best. You realize you don't need things. You need people. And that's something I'm really learning. You need people. You don't need things. You need people. And so I think, like I said, it was just it was a variety of things. It's just upbringing, environment, college, past experiences. But now as I grow more into the woman who I want to be and I desire to be, I'm realizing it feels better to be an army of us than an army of one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you said all of that so beautifully. And whenever I listen to that song <laughs> by Ari and she's like, yes. you need people. I'm like, yes. <laughs> you really do and I feel like a lot of us also really realize that during these times of being quarantined and being away from people is like damn like I really want community I really want to collaborate I really want to build with other people right um I have always wondered what it's like to grow up in New York like I grew up in a very small town where it's like super slow living and you know everyone knows everyone and whenever I like I mean it's so cliche like whenever I watch movies or short films or music videos and it's like about New York and there's like characters of like someone growing up there I'm like wow what a different world like I can't imagine how different I would be as a person if I grew up in the, in, in, in the city. Right. And I know that it is a very fast paced environment and it, like you mentioned, creates this kind of hustle in you, but you mentioned that you are breaking up with this hustle culture, this, um, like all grind, no sleep mentality. (laughs) How, like what inspired you to do that? Let's talk about that. Yeah. So last year I had a major breakup with hustle, hustle culture. And really what was the catalyst was me quitting my job in 2019. So I've been working full time for myself as a solopreneur and as the founder and CEO of my agency, The Last New Worker. So with that came a lot of responsibility, mainly how are we gonna eat? How are we gonna pay our bills? And how are we gonna still live the lifestyle that we enjoy living? And with that came a lot of work and came a lot of hustle. So literally the week that I quit my job, thankfully I was offered a major contract with Adidas. So I was helping them in store with a lot of their brand activations and it was an amazing experience. And from there, the opportunities just kept flowing in, flowing and flowing in. So I quit 2019, September 23rd. And from there, from that time, September 23rd to about this, no, really, yeah, like January 1st, 2020, I was working nonstop. It was Adidas, it was this client, it was that client. Um, And the very last job that I took on was actually the, uh, I think it's iHeartRadio or is it Z100? I believe it's iHeartRadio's like Jingle Ball, which is like a thing that they do every year in New York at Radio City Music Hall, major event. And I was burnt out. I was tired, like this, the most tired I've ever been like going to see my family for Thanksgiving and then right off a flight, going to work an event, like exhausted. And at the top of the year, you have to be mindful of what you say up into the universe, right? I was like, oh my gosh, I just want to reset. (laughs) Yeah. I just want to reset. I just want to unplug. I just don't want to do anything, right? But in the spirit of hustle culture, it's kind of like you're on this hamster wheel and you can't stop turning. You just have to keep going and keep going because it's in my mind, once you snap once, you should do it again, right? Like, oh, you landed that D's contract. 
what's next? And so I was trying to get a couple of things off the ground and they just weren't working. And I was getting frustrated with myself and I just really didn't know what was going on. And I was like, you know what? I just, I need a break. And that happened literally two months later in March, everything shut down. Like the world still has not been the same. And in that, I finally took time for myself. Like I finally shut the laptop down, put the spreadsheets away, everything, and was just on pause. Like when the world went on pause, so did Kai. And in that time, I started meditating more. I started doing yoga. I started eating better, was back in the gym, getting my body right, getting my mind right. Again, working on those relationships with my parents, um, letting go of a lot of things, really learning more about myself, taking inventory of my life, taking accountability over my life. Mm -hmm. And that provided me with so much clarity. And for the first time in a long time, it just felt like because no one could do anything, you literally couldn't do anything for the first, you know, three months of quarantine, which we're currently still kind of living in. Mm -hmm. It just felt good to like, for the first time, it felt like, okay, everybody's at the same spot in this race. Mm -hmm. We're all still running in place. And that felt good to me for the first time in a long time. Like, yo, we are all literally running in place. It doesn't matter what type of sneakers you have on, what cute little outfits you have on while you're running this marathon. We're still in the same spot together. Mm-hmm. And with that, I finally realized like grinding it out, making things happen in a matter of weeks. And that's not for me. I don't like to work under pressure, but I used to think, but this is where I, you know, I, I produce great work. And that's not true. Mm-hmm. I only adapted to that because that is That's literally what my sign does. I'm a Gemini. We're adaptable. We're a mutable sign. That is what we do. We blend in in any ecosystem, but that is not for me. I am a planner. I like to plan things out. I like to execute with efficiency. I don't like to have to pick things up on a ball and make it work. And no, I don't like to do that. And so I had to really understand that about myself to the point where it was like, okay, It isn't anymore about the hustle. It's about alignment. What makes sense for me right now? What is going to push me from this point to my business to that point in my business? And that is really where the intention behind where my agency is going really came from. You know, we are the last New Yorker, but we don't necessarily focus anymore on hustling and grinding out. We are focused on being strategic. We are focused on the change makers. We are focused on the people who create the trends we see now, because that is also what New York is about. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's really where it came from. And I'm just really thankful that I'm no longer in that relationship. (laughs) It was was literally killing me. Yeah. It it was no good for my psyche. Like, why am I waking up at 3 a.m.? Because I just looked at, scrolled through someone's Instagram. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? And also thief is the, comparison is the thief of joy. Mm-hmm. So I think for the first time in a long time, I just really felt like we're all at the same spot. We're all, you know, it may not be the same race because I'm running my own race, but no one's getting an edge up on anyone right now. Mm-hmm. And even when a lot of things shifted to virtual, you know, I got a lot of people who, are fans of my work or clients are like, hey, maybe you should kind of, you know, pivot. And I'm just like, no, I don't want to. Mm-hmm. I don't want to just come up with a whole bunch of programming that's virtual. No, that feels empty. That feels hollow. That's not where my heart is. That's not where our intentions lie. So really the pandemic just provided me with so much clarity. And I'm telling you, Jocelyn, clarity is one hell of a drug. <laughs> like, it feels you know, so good I know it feels so good once you know what you know and you know it to be true it's amazing mm-hmm. I can relate to so much of what you said um at the end of 2019 it was like I was 
really officially, you know, full time in my business, barely for like about a year at that time. And it was like, so blessed. And I'm so grateful for, you know, how everything conspired. But at the end of 2019, I remember thinking to myself, I had like project after project after project, I had to turn down other projects for the first time I had never been in that position. Right. And I remember feeling like very in my element because I love the work that I was doing. But I remember feeling very burnt out, like very depleted. I, I don't think I, I missed some of the holidays, like going with my family. Wow. And then stepping into 2020, I took on a client that was going to like added so much more of a load that I had. And I was excited about it because I was still in that mentality of like more, more, you know, (laughs) but then um, like I started kind of getting this instinct of like something not feeling right. Like, yeah. And then everything happened and things shut down and it did obviously take some adjustments and I think we were all mentally impacted by it in ways that we're still figuring out, but yeah. Um, But like you mentioned, like those first three or so months of quarantine, there was this sense of peace of like all of us being on the same page in a sense, like we're all in this together. We're all experiencing this for the first time, we're all on pause, we're all slowed down. And it took this like pressure off that- Immensely. Yeah, right? Like like all of a sudden, all the, the pressure to create and put out and like, like run this competitive made up race that I had with other people, like just kind of went away. And I was like, yo, I, you know, thankfully was in the position to be able to be like, I have the opportunity right now, like everything is slowed down. I have the opportunity to really take advantage of this. I have the opportunity to sit back and really think like, am I happy with the direction that I was going, the pace that I was going. Right. So I relate to everything that you said. And I feel like a lot of people are breaking up with hustle culture. Like a lot of us are realizing like no sleep. Like who came up with that? Like I need sleep. I need sleep to function. Like that's not healthy. Um, so I feel like whoever is listening to this right now or watching this and is also getting that itch to like slow down or to just not participate in hustle culture anymore. Like this is your sign to lean into that and follow that because obviously like your spirit is trying to tell you like, yo, this is not it. Like slow down, rest, like literally do nothing. (laughs) And, and but I, I think that's what it is. Like, even on the days where I feel like, yo, I really don't want to do nothing. is that little voice like you're being lazy. Like who taught us what laziness actually is? So I realized a lot of the times I'm not being lazy. I just need to rest. Like I need to not mm-hmm. think about the next three to six months for a day mm-hmm. like for a moment. I don't need to be planning and calculating things in my head. Yeah, you know, that, that's tiresome. Mm-hmm. People don't understand like the the brain work is also a part of the framework, like what goes on in your mind. So just making those making those days, those weeks. When this first started, I'm telling you, I really, I legit did nothing. Yeah, I yeah. legit did nothing. And even in the midst of everything happening last year, a lot of my contacts would hit me up like, "So what you been working on?" I'm like, "Me." Mm-hmm. My biggest project to date, myself. Yes. <laughs> like, this is the happiest I've been in <laughs> such a long time because I actually took 
the time. Mm-hmm. And I just think we need to focus more on that to be mm-hmm. a better entrepreneur, to be a better leader, to be a better boss. Focus on you. Like, take the time. Yeah. So, so real. It's yeah. so real. Yeah. And like, whatever works for you like focus on that like not whatever you think anyone else is doing or what you should be doing Mm -hmm. did you struggle like or do you continue to struggle with that thought of like allowing yourself to rest and to slow down or do you feel like you know all the time all the time like i just said sometimes there is that voice in my head like girl you being lazy it's like well i don't care i'm gonna be a bum today i'm gonna bum it out today because that's what feels good to me right now like just i think it really comes from trusting yourself Mm -hmm. and my mind will tell me one thing but my gut will tell me another so which one am i really going to listen to Mm -hmm. a woman's intuition has never lied right Mm -hmm. so it's like those are the days where i need to slow down Mm-hmm. And also as women, I just feel that we need to lean into who we are. We are emotional beings. Yeah. And we need those weeks. We need that week. And you know what week I'm talking about? We need that week. <laughs> just us. Sometimes it's two weeks. For real. Yeah. You need that. Because what? I think that our cycle, we only really have one week of feeling like ourselves. So it's like, I need that time for me. Mm-hmm. I need to nurture and nourish myself for me. Yeah. But also the other side is of that is I realize instead of being so militant, I need to be methodical. Mm-hmm. So it's like coming up with a schedule that works for me. Mm-hmm. And that schedule changes month by month sometimes. Like what time I wake up, what time I'll decide to take calls. Like most recently, because again, thinking in terms of hustle culture, I used to have consultation calls open on my calendar three days out the week. And I realized that was way too aggressive for me because I can't get half of the things I need to get done if I'm on a consultation call. Mind you, it's only 20 minutes, it's complimentary. But if I have three in a day, that's an hour of my time. I can't do that. And because it's free, people are very excited and eager to jump jump on the opportunity, right? Which Mm -hmm. is great. But if I have two, three back to back, that, that completely gets me distracted. So I had to scale that down. Like, okay, scaling this down to only twice a week. And if you miss me on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're just going to have to book next week. And if that's booked, you're just going to have to book the week after. So it's really just having those conversations where I'm being honest with myself because that's what's been most important. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, I struggle. I'm human. We all struggle. But I just really think being honest with yourself. Like there are days where, like this weekend, I really didn't do much, but what I did do was focus on a passion project. So that's something else I've been working on fitting into my schedule. Like, okay, if I don't do necessarily work, work, but I did focus on this passion project, that's something that I still did get accomplished, you mm-hmm. know? Um, yeah. And even like mental tricks, like um, I tend to focus on something for 20 minutes at a time. So I focus on that for 20 minutes. I take a break for 10, then I go back to 20. Then it's 20, 10, 20, 10. So you break it down in chunks because I feel that a lot of the times, because in the era of self-help and, you know, do it yourself, we have these massive to-do lists. We have these larger than life responsibilities that we give ourselves. But it's like, yo, Rome wasn't built in a day. Mm -hmm. Like piece by piece by piece by piece. Like even right now, I'm remodeling my home. But it's like, I'm like, okay, I need to do this. I need to, no, do it one day at a time. Let's focus first on reorganizing the closet. Okay, then we'll reorganize the furniture. Then we'll repaint the room. Yeah. You know, do it piece by piece. I just think that, and something else that I'm really unlearning is that my productivity does not determine my value or my worth. Mm-hmm. Just because I decided to lay in bed all day and watch Netflix doesn't mean I wasted a day. No, 
I enjoy taking that time for myself to catch up on the shows that I enjoy, to find a new show to binge. I enjoy taking that time for myself and breaking up with the blue screen and just cuddling up with my puppy and watching TV. Like that was time that I needed. Mm-hmm. But that's something else I'm really learning. My productivity does not determine my self-worth. It yes. should never. It should never. Even if all you accomplished this weekend was cooking a nice home meal, that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of ordering DoorDash or Uber Eats, you manage to cook a meal for yourself or your family or just yourself and your boo. That's give yourself a round of applause. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are not even doing that. Yeah. So I think that's been the biggest thing for me, just keeping myself in check and setting certain personal goals for me that just hit all the tiers of who I am and what I want to accomplish. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, social media has impacted us more than we're aware of. Oh my gosh. Because especially in our generation, like we really witnessed the advancement of technology. Like we actually know what it was like to not have all of the things that we have now in technology. And we've gotten so used to like this instant gratification that I think we subconsciously have in so many different aspects of our lives that we're always seeing people's accomplishments like all day, every day. And we're not seeing like the process that it took them, the journey that it took them, the time. It's like, we're forgetting that, you know, things are built brick by brick. Right. If you really want longevity, you know, if you want, if you want, you know, something quick, you know, I'm sure like a lot of people can create something, you know, that'll give you that instant feeling of accomplishment but Mm -hmm. we have to like you mentioned like really remind ourselves like if we really have these big goals and big dreams it's going to take time and I think a lot of people you know are afraid or whenever they hear people like us talking about like slowing down and allowing ourselves to do nothing for a day, it's like, yo, like even how we may have that thought about ourselves of like you're being lazy. It's more so about being intentional really is what it is. It's more so about being strategic. And I want to touch on that because you recently tweeted this tweet that said, create with intention, scale with strategy. Yes, and I yes. was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. And that's so true. Like um, strategy is so important. Like you, if you are really strategic about your time and how you invest your time, you can definitely have a day of nothing and have a day of like everything, you know? Right. Um, Let's expand more on that. Um, When it comes to, you know, whatever you feel called to touch on, whether it's building a brand or just you personally, what does that process look like for you in creating intention and then building with strategy? So the first thing I always ask myself is, what do I want to create that I wish existed? That's where I feel the framework should start. What pain point am I solving? You know, who am I doing this for? And what problem does it solve for them? So in 2019, or was it 18? Getting my dates mixed up probably was 2019 and 2019 that was the lack of women in hip hop on stages. Mm -hmm. And that's when I created my concert series, don't sleep in which I featured an all female lineup of MCs um, and really catered to black women in this space. Because I feel now there really isn't as much of that conversation happening, but from 
the time that I was writing because I have a background in music journalism. Mm -hmm. And from the time that I was writing between 2015 to 2018, that is primarily what my work focused on was amplifying women in hip hop. Mm -hmm. And I'd have the same conversation mainly with men. So who, who's really out here rapping except for Nicki Minaj? And it's like, um, scroll down your timeline, do your research. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't have time to write it out for you, sweetheart. Like, just like do your research. But then I realized, you know what? Nobody cares, Kai. That's why you, they keep asking you these same questions. Nobody cares. So how can you ease this pain point so that there is less of this topic of, so who's really popular that's going to be better than da 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 so that's when I created the concert series. Mm-hmm. And so from there, we went from just a one-off show. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this in celebration of Women's History Month. And it's just going to be a thing that we do and we see what happens. And so it was produced through my agency and it was a hit. People loved it. And I had so many other women reaching out to me like, hey, so how can I get put on? How can I perform, blah, blah, blah. And I realized I was tapping into a market that, you know, we are often overlooked. And that just didn't make sense to me. So from there, we went from doing them quarterly. And then from there, we went to do it into more or less of like a mini tour. Um, You know, 2020 kind of shut that down. We're still working on recalibrating that. But that's really where I start. It's like, what what do you want to create that you wish existed? And in that, what pain point does this fix? Because it's like, okay, I have a lot of clients come to me and they say, well, I want to start a clothing brand. And I'm like, that's great. But why, why do you, what does this t-shirt represent that it could be more meaningful to the, to the culture, to your community than just a tangible item of cloth, of cotton. And that really gets people going. And something that I always advise in my consultation calls is you need to set intentions. You need to be intention setting. Mm -hmm. And we often look at intention setting as something personal, like, okay, it's the new moon. It's the full moon. Okay. It's my birthday. Okay. It's a new month. I'm going to set these intentions but we often fail to acknowledge how important that is when it comes to building a brand or business, Mm -hmm. right? Because that literally builds out the framework. Um, You know, I don't want to get all marketing specific, but that really helps you with your UVP, your unique value proposition. Like, okay, this is, this is what I do. This is who I'm helping. And this is what I'm solving. So if you're intentional about all these things, you have a place to start and now you know where to scale. So that's really just like that, you know, that tweet. A lot of my tweets also, they're really just notes to self. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's like something I just have to put out loud, like in the say out loud and put out there in the universe so that whenever it comes back up, I'm like, okay, I'm reminded myself, like, this is what I need to be on track with. And so, you know, create with intention, scale with strategy. That's really the model behind the revamped Last New Yorker and where I really see my business and my personal brand going um, Mm -hmm. because that's just the future I want us to live in. Like less vanity metrics, less doing this just for the sake of doing it. You know, I've had so many people come to me and say, yo, you should start a podcast. You have a great voice. You have great things to say. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. But why? Yeah. Why would I add to the noise? And which is why I'm so glad I'm here with you because I feel that even this podcast, like the fact that you made me do an exercise before is so dope, you know? (laughs) The fact that this isn't just insignificant rambling, not saying that all podcasts are, but it isn't just a reiteration of, okay, pop culture news and, or let's air out men or let's da, 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 da. It's really like, let's have an honest conversation about how and why you start with gratitude. And also even speaking to your brand, Jocelyn, like looking at women like you and other women in my vicinity, I love how you've done the same thing. 
you know, I first got wind of you through the Tuscan Hip Hop Festival. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, this is so dope. Like she's doing this. I can do something like this, you know? Yeah. But it's even how you scaled beyond that. It's not just, okay, I work in this space of music and hip hop. I also create these really amazing brand experiences that make you analyze yourself. Mm-hmm. And when I saw what you were doing at Rolling Loud, because I've attended those con- those concerts, I was like, wow, this girl's good. Mm-hmm. Like you are making people be more mindful and have heightened awareness in an environment where it's kind of like, let's just get drunk and forget the night. But you create an experience where it's like, no, I'm going to walk away with that forever. Um, and also like how you've been able to scale into the modeling and into the journaling. And that's literally what create with intention and scale with strategy is. That's literally it, you know? Um, And I just think that it's something that people should keep in the back of their mind as a placeholder. It's something that's always keeps me aligned with where I want to be. And it's, it's really, it just really keeps me in check. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for the validation and seeing me and my intention. And I am so grateful that my intention is transparent and is making itself known out there. Um, I feel like, you know, in this past year of stillness and expanding in different ways and not doing these kind of like a bigger out there projects. It's kind of felt like, like, is anyone watching or like, is anyone, you know, but so thank you for that validation. It feels really good. Um, But I agree with you. And I think, I don't think, but this is why, I felt so called to you because I think both of us really understand the power of intention. And I think because we are in this instant gratification culture, in this hustle culture that I think is dismantling, um, we are in this like content creation, like putting it out, putting it out, um, things going viral, TikTok, all these platforms coming up it's like so many people just want to create just to create, just want to put things out there just to put things out there. But you got to have, like, those things aren't going to last. Like, if you really want longevity, you really do have to think about your why. Like, your why is so important and your why is your intention. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you, like, when I just started this podcast for a while. I didn't do it because I was like, there's so many podcasts out there, like this and that. But it's something I always wanted to do, one. And two, like how, like what is it, what will make it mine? How will it be different? What will make it unique? You know, sitting down and thinking about those things is so key, so important, whether it's personal, like in your relationships, or professional and your projects. Um, So I hope that, you know, anyone listening to this, you know what intentional gals to go to if you need it, you know? (laughs) Um, Because it is so important. Like I feel like imagine if everyone created with intention, like if everyone was out here creating like really purposeful content and every time someone put something out, you're like, wow, someone really put thought into this, you know, like this really made me feel something because I could tell they put their emotion into it. Yeah. It'd be super. I mean, I don't think that it isn't happening. I just think that, like you said, we are disillusioned And I tweeted that the other day too. The internet is a tool, but it's also an illusion. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm in a place now, mainly because of the pandemic, where I feel that, you know, not to get all spiritual on y'all, but I feel that I have a very heightened sense of awareness. 
Mm-hmm. Where I'm just like, eh, no, that's not it. And it could look like it's it. It could have it written literally on the tag in big, bold letters. I'm like, no, that's not it. And so I feel that there are people like you and I, many people that I could just rattle off the top of my head who are moving in the same way and leaning into who they are and winning at that. But we are just really in a time where it's a lot of illusions. It's very, I don't want to say force fed, but it's kind of like just the algorithm is manipulated, you know, Mm. the algorithms manipulated. So you don't really see the person who worked five weeks on a project because you don't interact with their page as much, but you see the person who created X, Y, Z in a day. So it's, it's a lot of just like illusions. And I just feel like right now is the time that we need to hold up mirrors. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're really into Bruce Lee films, Mm -hmm. but I love me some Bruce Lee. (laughs) (laughs) But um, They are very, um, inspirational right yeah okay the one why am I forgetting the name the one where he's with my guy okay the name escapes me but basically in the film he's like the enemy is an illusion and it always holds up mirrors always holds up mirrors and I really thought about that for a long time like especially during this time, I feel like we've all been holding up mirrors and a lot of things are being exposed. So just have to be mindful of that. So I think there are people out there like you and I, it's just the mirrors that we're holding up. What are they reflecting off of? You know, like we're seeing now, I think we're really cutting through the the thick of the noise, through the small, like we're getting through all of that. And I just feel like this is a time of recalibrating. This is a time of renewal. Mm -hmm. And we will really get to a place where it's more of us versus them. And it's it's not a competition, something like that, but it'll be more of us doing this intentional work Mm -hmm. versus them who are looking for that instant gratification, those vanity metrics. Because as you said, we're in a time right now where it's all about how we feel. We cannot deny that. Like Mm -hmm. even with the music, yeah. There's so many artists right now who tried this or that, and we've been like, uh, no. That's not gonna <laughs> yeah. So it's, we're really getting to that point where just the collective consciousness is like, this is where we want to be. This is where we're moving towards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. Let's get spiritual. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because that is where we're going. Like, I really do feel like we are like the collective consciousness is awakening in so many different ways. And there are these mirror reflections everywhere, whether we're realizing like the smoke and mirrors that came because of the stillness or we're seeing our own reflections in things and why they impact us or like why they trigger us in certain ways. Um, And I think because of that, people are seeking more depth in brands. People want a story. People want like people slowly but surely are becoming sick of instant gratification, like just one and done content, one and done artists. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm grateful for that. And I do feel that the sooner you confront yourself, the sooner you um, dive into and lean into that calling, whatever you're feeling you're being called to do, like it's there for a reason. And feeling your feelings, like if you feel like you need a rest, you got to rest. If you feel inspired, lean into that inspiration. Um, If you're sick and tired of like artists putting out music that sounds like everyone else's and you yourself are an artist, like what more do you want to see of in the world? Create that. What does that look like to you? Right. So, yeah. Um, 
to kind of bring this all full circle, one thing that you had brought up to me is that the key to winning is leaning into who you are. Absolutely. And I feel like that touches on what we've been talking about. So tell us a little bit more about that. So a good, really good friend of mine, Jules, shout out to Jules. Uh, he would always say to me, when I was really in the process of figuring out what I wanted to do, because writing will always be my first love. And I think it's why I'm able to express myself in the way that I do, why I feel so deeply, why I'm very analytical, why I'm very observant about certain things. It's because I'm a writer at heart. Mm -hmm. And when I was kind of in between phases, because after being laid off from a major company and I took that rather personally, um, you know, it was a hard transition for me. I went to him and I'm like, you know, I'm tired of this. Like I'm tired of being with the press or being of the press. Um, I'm tired of the pay. I'm tired of, I'm just really tired of working for someone else. And I was really working to figure out a way to put everything together. Like, okay, so what am I good at and what can I pivot to? And he would always tell me, Kai, you have to lean in. What are you good at? You're good at connecting people. You're good at communicating. You are good at strategizing. You have a great expansive mind, like lean into that. And he would just always make that a point of drilling it into my head, like lean into who you are and you win. Like that's how you win. You know, anybody can do what you're doing, but it's you that sells what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And something that has always stuck with me is just that. And I feel this year, especially, I've taken note of that. And, you know, I kind of lived in a space where I've been in the spirituality closet. I've been in the cannabis closet. I've been in, you know, all different shapes and reiterations of myself to kind of fit a mold that isn't me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sophisticated and I also like to smoke weed. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> I, you know, I like to go with my girls and have a good time, but I also like to take time and meditate with my crystals. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that sometimes as women, we're forced to choose. You either have to be this or you have to be that. You cannot be this multifaceted whole person being with all these great attributes and be, and like these things that sometimes, you know, contradict each other. And this was really the year of me, you know, again, being intentional. It's like, no, this is who I am and this is what it's going to be. And looking around again, because I believe heavily in networking across, as Ms. Issa Rae said, looking to the left and the right, and again, seeing women like you, seeing my girl, Christi, uh, Christina, Christy, who is a hand model, a nail tech, an actual model, and she also is dabbling in music right now, and she's just having fun with it, but she's mm -hmm. good at it. She just opened her own nail studio where I get my nails done now instead of her making house calls to me. So that is just so inspiring to me. Then seeing a woman like yourself, you started with event production, then you went into brand experiences, then you started your own personal space where it's like, okay, I'm inviting you to be more open-minded with me, explore spirituality. You do your one-on-one -on -one sessions. You have your journaling, you have your, medita your meditative guides. That is so inspiring to me because I never fathomed that I could be all these things. Mm -hmm. I used to think, because, you know, we live in the era of personal branding. I used to think, okay, no, it needs to just be this title. I just need to be a writer. And then if I get a byline here and here, I'll add that in my bio. And it's like, no, I can be more than just a writer. And I've always been more than just a writer. Mm -hmm. When I was in those rooms, at those major media publications, just shooting off ideas. 
and then them running with it. I'm like, damn, like I'm a creative genius. Like I don't need to be in this room to make this happen. I am the room. Mm. So I think that's really what I mean by lean into who you are and when. Like even mm-hmm. a really good friend of mine, um, another Christina, she is a mommy now. She became a mom at the top of 2020 or midway 2020 at some point last year. Mm -hmm. But she really leaned into that. She's a mompreneur now and she's getting features because she does reviews on, you know, holistic baby food. She started Mm. a book club for her daughter, Tristan, Tristan's book club. Um, And they just did a reading with an NFL athlete. Like those are things that I'm like, wow, you know, you really leaned into motherhood. And yeah. that provided even more opportunities for you where 20, 30 years ago, it's like, okay, you're a mom, pack it up. Yeah. Stay home. You need to watch the kid. But we live in the digital era now. And as you said, we've been blessed enough to actually grow up in this era and watch it evolve. Mm-hmm. So like technology, we need to evolve too. So I'm at a space now where it's like, I don't even like to refer to myself as an entrepreneur. I'm a soulpreneur because everything that I do, I believe is a reflection of my spirit Mm -hmm. and, you know, what I want to contribute to this world. And, you know, with that comes the fact that I love marketing and I love helping people and I love being a vessel of information and I love connecting people. And then also, you know, in my spirituality, I love healing crystals and I love doing moon rituals. And no, that doesn't make me a witch, even though a witch is not a bad word, you know, and like I'm unlearning, I'm still processing and cannabis is a part of my spirituality too. I have a very conscious relationship with cannabis, something that I've been cultivating as well. So it's like, I can be all of these things and still be me and be impactful and still be inspirational and still be a leader and still at the end of the day be able to sleep knowing that Kai is Kai there is no there's no difference between my persona online and who I am Mm -hmm. like my homeboy Evan always makes fun of me he's like you know your tweets be love and light and then sometimes they get a little gangster. I'm like, because that's me that's me that's who I am so just really again Lean into who you are and win, because that is how there are over a thousand nail techs, hairstylists, marketers, podcasters, actors, actresses. That's how. Mm-hmm. That's how they didn't they didn't reinvent the wheel. They decided to be themselves. And this mm-hmm. year, the year that I've decided I'm going to be myself fully and wholeheartedly. So yeah. Oh, that was good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know, like my time. <laughs> it really is like, you know, when they say the answers are within you. So true. It's because they are. And the answer is to be you fully, right. like all of you. And I, I feel like you know, I've been thinking a lot about the complexities of being human and just how beautiful that is and how all the parts of that make us who we are is like amazing. It's beautiful. And to show all the parts of you to the world, like I've always struggled with having to pick one title like that never felt right to me when, you know, growing up, people would ask me, you know, what do you want to be? It was like I had all these different answers in my head, but I felt kind of ashamed or kind of like afraid to tell you, I want to be a event producer. I want to have my own small business. I want to be a writer. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a mod, you know, like all of these things, because then it's like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. but no, like embrace that, embrace all of that, because that mm-hmm. is you know, in being yourself, it's going to be so much easier to create. It's going to be so much easier to attain longevity. It's going to be so much easier to create a community because they're going to feel you for who you are. 
Right. And if you start building from a foundation of being something you're not, eventually that's going to crumble because it's not going to feel right. You know, eventually you're going to be like, yo, how did I get here? This is not me. I don't even know why I'm doing this anymore. Like, so all, yeah. All truth. It unravels. It gets to a point because like, <laughs> I, like, I'm obsessive about my bio. And I used to be so obsessive, like, okay, do I say that I'm this? Do I say that I'm that? And something else we have to realize who is creatives, stop attaching yourself to the company. You're not the company. You're expendable to the company. I'll tell you that much. Something that I've learned in my time as a freelancer and in and out of these corporate offices, you are who you are before you got there. Mm. And you need to understand that. So what you feel comfortable identifying as, that is who you are. And there's nothing wrong with being a multi-hyphenate. Mm -hmm. Again, we're in this era of self-development self and personal branding. So it's like, no, you have to be very specific. Actually, no. Find that one thing you're really good at, hone in on that, and that will lead you to literally everything else. Mm -hmm. For me, it was writing. And I realized, oh, damn, I'm good at PR. I'm good at, you know, content curation. I'm good at event curation. Find that one thing, hone in on that, lean into that, and everything else will manifest before you. Mm -hmm. So I just need to think also, perhaps we just do away with titles. Maybe that's a thing, too, that I'm starting to realize, like, maybe I just, I'm in this space. Like I'm from the future. Like I just came here to help. Maybe that's just what it is. Like maybe that's just what I'm here to do. Yeah. But don't be afraid to be good at more than one thing. They often say, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. I don't believe that. Yeah. We, like you said, we grew up in this digital age. We were coding on MySpace. Oh you know? man, I was so good at it. <laughs> oh so good. I knew how to make a heart appear as the heart. Like. Listen, we, we, we were built for this. We were literally built to be like this. So why, why ever feel like you need to pull back? Why ever feel like you need to hinder yourself from that? So that's just really where I'm at with it. Like do everything your heart desires because this life, as we've seen in the past year of loan, whew, you never know. Yeah. You never know. And then when you look at your favorite people because I'm really visual so I love vision boards I love mood boards like an Easter Ray everyone's like she just writes comedy sketches and it went from that YouTube show she's a YouTube creator she went from YouTube creator to showrunner to actress to now she owns a music supervising company and a record label and I remember when that came out, everybody was like, what does Issa Rae know about music? It's like, well, have you watched just one episode of Insecure? The playlisting is phenomenal. Like the soundtrack is great. Mm -hmm. She knows what she's doing. But again, like I said, it was the creation of the show that led to everything else. Yeah. It yeah. Thing she honed in on that led to everything else. Yeah. What is your thing? Like, what is your peanut butter and jelly? Like, what makes things go around for you? Yeah. That's really where people need to focus. Mm -hmm. It really is about just picking something that you really feel called to do and doing that thing and allowing it to expand you and lead you into everything else. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, this, this is so is good. good. <laughs> this is good. I feel like, you know, we touched on so much and so much of it did have to do with intention. So much of it had to do with, you know, being true with yourself and how, you know, the course of the past year impacted us, you know, unexpectedly and unfortunately in some ways, but also, you know, taking power where you can take power and taking control where you can take control. And you always have control over who you are, who you are becoming, your direction. And I'm glad that you and I can say that, you know, we really 
took advantage, you know, and leaned into ourselves and can have a beautiful conversation like yes. this. <laughs> and more to come. I can't believe this is our first like real conversation. I know. <laughs> but more to come. This For everything sure. we're doing again, like I I really can't commend you enough. I know I'm the guest here, but literally everything you're doing, Jocelyn, you're on the right path. Don't Thank let you. up. Don't stop. Even when you have those moments like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Just do it because this, this is like, this is it. Like you figured it out. And I feel like a lot of people are trying to get to where you are and you got it. Thank you. Thank you. I receive that and I reciprocate that. And thank you so much for this energy exchange. And I'm so excited for people to listen to this. Thank you. I hope um, they like what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they will. They will. And whoever is meant to hear this is going to hear this for sure. Yeah.